important right now. We are in a double round robin phase. The Americans will play each other just to make sure there's no funny business going on. So on table number one, the feature court, we have the Americans, Michael Landers and Timothy Wong. And on court number two, Barney Reed Jr. and Adam Hugh. So there will be a lot more play ahead to figure out who will take the third spot to go to London. Michael Landers taking the first point there, and that's that's not really how Timothy Wong wants to play this match. He doesn't want to back into the midcourt and have to beat Michael Landers from there. Almost seemed on that first point that he was overhitting a little bit, maybe trying to set the tone that he's not going to be afraid to put some power behind his shots. I would say that that's the case. But at the same time, Timothy Wong's forehand technique is such that he's better counterattacking, and when he tries to act like he's doing there, he can use the top spin of the opponent. When he actually has to generate the spin, the ball comes out a little bit flat, so when he, he does have the tendency to overhit that forehand. It really shows you, Han, how styles play such a big factor in this sport. You can have two players that can play the same player and have exact opposite results, and when they play each other, see those differences really magnified. The other interesting aspect of this particular match is Michael Landers won the men's singles title three years ago and Timothy won it twice, so it's really a battle of men's singles champions as well. Oh, that's exactly what you spoke about, Han. It's just Michael's rallying ability from the backcourt, but that time Timothy was able to step up and put a little bit more pressure on the ball. He was able to stay closer to the table, relatively speaking, and not be forced away from it. And that's exactly when he overhits, when he, there's not much pace, not much spin on the ball, and it just kind of floated that one off the end. You know, I've seen Han, Timothy, especially when players are lobbing to him, often just go to almost a soft counter where most other male players will wind up and hit it as hard as they can. He definitely goes both from the medium fast to the slow to try to change the rhythm. And there's a power that we haven't seen so much of late. Timothy doing extremely well to even get to this situation. Just a few months ago, he was coming back from a wrist, wrist operation just prior to last year's U.S. Nationals. Once again, Timothy employing an aggressive deep serve. We saw that in the second finals against Pierre Look in where both players were using a lot of deep serves. Even though Timothy missed that, that's a good sign for him. Usually Michael Landers using that reverse serve short to his forehand really ties him up. Looked like Timothy had really set that block up nicely, but Michael, with his shot-making ability and really fast feet, and will put some pressure on Timothy from the forehand side. opening by Michael. Again, it seems if Michael can make that first opening, he really has a huge advantage, whereas he's also comfortable blocking Timothy's first ball. Michael has such an advantage when he's able to back off the table and just employ these heavy spins. Timothy really likes pace more than he likes speed. And that's what Michael doesn't want to do. Even if he lands that, Timothy has a great blocking game close to the table when there's pace on the ball. Nice combination there with a heavy, slow spin loop. Michael controlled that very well, but Timothy came back 
with a very powerful forehand. A little bit of overheating on that last ball. Absolutely, it feels like Timothy not really comfortable applying his own power if the, there's no pace on the ball. There again, just not enough rotation on the ball for him. And there, Michael taking the first game, Timothy being a little bit too aggressive. And Sean, just two or three times that game, we saw what, exactly what you talked about with the overhitting. I don't know if it's a technique issue, a physical issue, or both, but it really seems like it, he has trouble getting enough rotation on the ball to make that forehand a safe shot. Right, he definitely, especially with Michael, back about six to eight feet, it's almost like he's trying to smash it through him instead of making that good technical choice and maybe doing it with speed. He tends to be doing it with a little bit more of a flat hitting type of style. And I'm surprised because he does have really good spin on all of his balls. And when Pierre Look Hintz was playing, you saw that he just stayed with it. He didn't go for too much, and that was the difference. We're back in the start of the second game after Michael Landers took the first game, 11 to 8. A little bit of a half-long serve, it seemed to have got, gotten away from him, but Timothy was playing it as a short ball. Oh, really a wild counter-attack attempt for Michael Landers there. Great spin on the backhand side, as usual, from Timothy Wong. That's a good sign for Timothy. If he can force Michael Landers to return serves with the backhand side, Michael much less comfortable. Right now I wonder, Han, how much that mental intensity and grind that Timothy is feeling after going through such a tough match with pure look to possibly qualify now to have to come back. Same day within basically a two or three hour window and reset his focus. He definitely seems less excited and has a lot less energy than in that particular match. And he's going to have to regain that energy. I know he likes to probe the opponent in the first couple of games of a match, but I think that that accounts for a lot of his slower starts. He was down 2-0 in that final before really turning it on, and he needs to jump out to a faster start this game. And from my perspective, the way Michael has approached this game, it, it's almost like he hasn't played in any of the prior tournaments. He's up there fighting for every ball and encouraging himself, and it's really the ability to forget as quickly as possible. Michael showing a lot of class there, pointing out a double edge or a double bounce. But Timothy won the point. Remember we saw when Michael lost to a pure look in that second tournament, how after hitting about nine winners in a row, how he really went kind of stale. And we're seeing a little bit of that right now. That's your point, Sean. Michael, I've been really impressed by his preparation, both physically and mentally, before some of his matches this tournament. Really very professional. No one has had more media demands on their time than Michael has. I know, working with USA Table Tennis, the number of requests that we've had for Michael, especially, so we saw that wonderfully done Kellogg's commercial, as well as some of the other magazines and newspapers that have wanted a piece of him, so. There's that soft forehand where you're just wondering, is he gonna try to overhit? And sometimes by bringing the player in, he actually causes a little bit of off balance on their end of the table. Beautiful backhand down the line. When you step around the backhand like Timothy did, you really leave open a hole. And Michael took advantage nicely. But there's the forehand flip. 
Really didn't land a good one all of the first game, Timothy, but finally getting his range there. Very powerful counterattack to take it to one game apiece. It's going to be interesting, Han, with these round robins. Again, it could come down to that tiebreaker situation. So every game, every point is going to have great significance. Okay, we're going to jump back to game number three of the Landers Wong round robin match. Timothy to serve on the far side. really see in the first two to three points of every game which player is going to be a little bit more assertive. And we haven't really heard Timothy out on the court this match compared to his last match against Pierre-Luc Ince. Doesn't really, we don't really sense, I don't think, the same energy levels in this particular match. I think Timothy realizes with in order to win the third tournament, he's going to have two round robin matches. And then if he's successful in those, a semifinals and a finals, and you just don't want to burn off all that mental energy. Absolutely. But Michael has come out of the gates in this third game very strong, really establishing that he's going to be the offensive player. Nice opening loop there. And that's a several times already this game that Michael Landers has been able to open off of Timothy Wong's serve, just not able to keep it short. The players complaining that someone has employed some flash photography, flash photography in the crowd, which is causing this particular delay. Timothy having a serve get away from him, but actually turning into be a direct winner. Ball just brushed the edge. It's so dangerous, though, to spin anything high into the middle of the table against Timothy. Counterattack a lot stronger than his initiation. Now, Han, we were talking about it earlier, why Timothy doesn't seem to have the power. And looking at his stroke a lot more, it seems like he's coming across his body, not necessarily using his shoulders as much, or really the waist or hips. When you come across the body, you're really going at the racket speed versus the full extension of your trunk and twisting. So that might be something that, as he wants to add power and extra gear that he works on. It's great. I'm getting the full extension. Yeah, it's great on the loose balls that you can get away with it, but it's when somebody's blocking and looping back to you, you're just not going to get that heavy top spin. He likes to come across so he can cover the ball, and that's what makes his counter-attack counter off high ball so lethal. I thought it was a very effective serve that Michael just pulled out there, but Timothy was ready for it. And Michael again showing how streaky he is after a strong start, falling into a very quick 4-7 deficit. Little off-balance forehand jam there. Yeah. We, we've seen Michael make some of the most amazing shots so far in this tournament, while at the same time have difficulty keeping that lead or the constant pressure. <laughs> Timothy with a nice one-two combination.
and Michael Landers just backing away from the table very quickly after Timothy gets the opening. I just don't sense the same energy that he had at the beginning of this match. I don't know whether it's the number of matches, the length of the event, but something's obviously not the same. And he's going to a backhand serve right now, which is normally an indication that you've lost confidence in your regular setup, which is a forehand serve to hopefully get followed by a forehand attack. So going for a new look. Then going for a big backhand, loop kill not even close. And now Michael trails two games to one after an initial very solid first game. But the last two really haven't been close at all after a fairly good start in the third game. I feel like Timothy was really prepared for a battle after that match against Pierre Luke. He knows what level the competitors are going to be, going to be playing at, and he despite going through a fight, much to his credit, is ready for another fight, it seems. Looks like he settled down his nerves a little bit, and he's just ready to work hard for each point, where Michael has relied so much on his shot-making ability that if the shot's not there, he really doesn't have an easy way to get the point going with his advantage. At this point, I feel like Ernesto, Michael's coach, really needs to settle him down mentally more than anything else. I don't think it's a matter of anything really tactical. Michael's the type that really just needs to get his first attack in and then he's, he'll be all right. But at this point, even when he's doing that, he just doesn't seem ready for the next ball. Right, it almost seems like Michael would be better off attacking real fast or sitting back a little bit and playing off of Timothy's first ball because he really hasn't had that much difficulty blocking the first loop. Here we go, game number four. Yeah, again, Timothy just able to put Michael out of position after the first attack. Michael just backing up and then reaching for the ball. No! And you can see Michael lunging forward on that backhand block. He needs to be moving his feet, not just putting his racket close to the ball. Wow, Timothy head of the gate at 3-0, really sending a message with a 2-1 lead. Even though everyone mentions how much difficulty Timothy has with Michael, he's looking very comfortable so far in this match. Those are some tremendous forehand and backhand loops by Michael. And I think what's telling for Timothy is Michael has gone away from that reverse short top spin to the forehand serve every time and instead is using it very selectively. And normally oh. when he plays Timothy, he uses that time and time again. Um, Timothy seems to have handled it better this time around. Timothy taking a little risk by jumping and using a backhand, but that's a natural angle to deal with that inside-out serve. Michael just needs to make sure he moves his feet. And the way Timothy is able to get away with that is that he actually takes a little bit of pace off of that banana flip, but the backhand when he comes across and puts a lot of top spin on the ball. Solid blocking by Timothy Wong, just staying right up at the table and able to handle everything that Michael is sending his way. I know this is part of Timothy's game plan, something he wants to do a little bit differently this time instead of trying to overhit on everything, using his pace and using his speed to move Michael around. And a serve that gets away. Again, how much do you think is that nerves? How much is that technique? How much is that going for the serve and not really connecting on it? In that particular situation, I don't think it's necessarily nerve. I think it's a serve that he doesn't really use often. And as you know, serves such fine margins, if you don't have the correct preparation and try to use it in a match situation, very easy to just let it get away from you. Michael taking a timeout right now making sure that this game doesn't get away and possibly making some tactical changes that 
even if he were to lose this game, maybe could go on to the following game. But Timothy has to be feeling pretty good at this stage, but streaks have been the norm. I think one of the main adjustments for Michael here is to try to get more forehands out of the middle and his backhand corner. When Timothy's able to move him out wide to the forehand, Timothy can really block him out of position with that great blocking game he has. And it's a little bit of a conundrum for Michael, I think, because his forehand is the stronger side. So to say that you want the opponent not to go wide to your forehand, being a forehand player, can be a little bit difficult. And clearly at 6-3, to three, this isn't that big of a lead that if Michael puts two, two good shots together that he isn't right back in this game. But Timothy able to get that banana backhand flip in. Actually and that's, and played that's a little really, bit high. And that's really, I think, what Michael actually wanted. He loves to turn the corner and take that forehand from that position, just missing. Great serve return there from Michael Landers. Really needed to be a little bit more aggressive off the serve return and get it there. Timothy just not ready for it since Michael has not done that often so far this match. Great placement on that attack. <laughs> Absolutely perfect placement, just handcuffing Michael Landers. We'd seen Michael earlier in the tournament make one of those shots from that position, almost a no-look forehand. But Timothy spinning him around and extending the lead to eight to four. And that's that's, the, a that's <laughs> the difference, I think, between the two players so far this match. Michael, I think, had the opportunity to put a forehand away, but he just timed it so late. Timothy going through a little misdirection down the line, but clearly with Michael, if you have to go for a backhand loop after two big forehands to keep the pressure on, you might want to move your feet a little bit more. Timothy again with a lot of control. He's really doing exactly what he needs to stay close to the table, taking command of the point early. Again, another precision placed ball right to Michael's transition point, right at the elbow area. And Timothy now with a three to one, commanding three to one game lead. We're going to jump over to the Reed Hugh match. Now a huge backhand block by Barney Reed to take a two to one lead in his round robin group. As a lefty, you've got to watch out for that. The, the righties normal cross court winners are right into a lefty's backhand. Sean, I think going back to the Michael Landers match, Michael really He's most comfortable taking that forehand loop, which is his strongest shot, almost off the drop and really putting heavy topspin on the ball. Sometimes if a player can if, if a player can really deal with that shot well, he has trouble taking the ball a little bit earlier. That's not really not his game. He has trouble getting back in position after that first loop. And look at the body language right now. Timothy running out to the court. A little bit more similar to what we saw in the finals when he was playing and leading Pierre Look. Michael has his work cut out from right now. And he's starting on the right foot. Again, it's amazing when these players have their back up against the wall, how they change tactically, tactics so dramatically. I've been very impressed so far this match with Timothy's placement on his first shot. Michael hasn't really gotten many counter-attacking counter opportunities. Zero. Timothy jumping out to a quick three to one lead this game. Of course, up three games to one, trying to close this match out. Oh, 
Another great backhand top spin this time from Timothy. Of course, in this format, in this round robin format, John, every game is important. I wouldn't be surprised if we even said every point is important because if it's a three-way tie among three players and the games are tied up, you will go down to points. So any loose points that you give away that you swung too hard at or you didn't take seriously, they can come back to haunt you. Lucky block there, but Timothy is in great position. He didn't have to really move all that much. He was able to block in front of his body. I think Michael Landers would be a little frustrated by that, given the sort of loose, weak return from the forehand side of the table. <laughs> that was not a <laughs> loose, weak return. Timothy just absolutely killing that flip cross court. Timothy really hasn't been afraid to go for that winner. I think that match against Ince earlier today really helped him deal with that short serve. He needs to hold his nerve here, trying to close out this match. Nice misdirection again. Timothy really playing well both to the wide back and into the center of the table. Can Michael going to the backhand serve? Timothy getting a little bit over eager. He had good position, blocking all of Michael's attacks, soaking up the pressure and just went for a little swat on the forehand side. Uh-oh. Michael now beginning to Talk to himself. He's getting frustrated with the amount of what he perceives to be lucky balls that Timothy has gotten. He's getting a little bit down on himself. It's one thing to think it, it's the other thing to let your opponent know that it's bothering you. Michael just trying to anticipate the attack there. Tim's been placing it so well that he's having to guess and anticipate, just mistiming that counterattack. Great forehand block there. Just a reflexive block cross court. Tim thought he had hit a clean winner, way out of position. Michael staying with the backhand serve. That backhand serve really not giving him much of an advantage. Timothy dealing with it, no problem. Much easier to drop shot the backhand serve than the forehand serve. Oh, what a talk about shot making. That was one amazing backhand block down the line, walking away from the ball at the same time. But Timothy still has four match points in this round robin match. He needs to maintain his focus after going for an unneeded amount of power on the previous ball and allowing his opponent to block an another clean winner out of position. He needs to calm down and play a solid game. And there he has it. Timothy Wong with a strong four to one game victory over teammate Michael Landers to give him the early one match win in his round robin.